My name is Michael Potts and I play Slow Drag. Slow Drag is the bass player for Ma Rainey's band, uh, along with the other band members. He's from Arkansas, deep south, uh, southwest in, in Arkansas. Uh, probably born around 1870, because the uh, movie's taking place in 1927. Um, and as far as me, I've never touched the bass in my life but they hired coaches for me. So I had a coach in New York uh, two weeks before coming out here, and then for the first two and a half weeks of being here, certainly during the rehearsal period, they, they hooked me up with another coach. Ma Rainey, if you don't know, Ma Rainey is, is known as the mother of the blues. As blues, as you know, is probably the mother of uh, most uh, popular music forms in America and has gone all around the world. And so this is a story basically of her and her band coming to Chicago to record an album. At, at that point, she was one of the best selling blues artists uh, in the country, probably the world at that point. Uh, and this is maybe later on in her career. Uh, she's sort of in the play, sort of slightly being been eclipsed by Bessie Smith is now, is now uh, the big blues artist. So it's basically a story of her coming to Chicago, her and her band to record this session, this album for Paramount. And we were basically looking at the relationship of these, of her band members, her interaction with uh, her manager and also the head of the recording uh, of Paramount recording. And basically the relationship between these, these four members of the band and the conflict between sort of the old and the new because you have Levy, who's the youngest and most recent band member. He's getting more and more into jazz, which is a f another musical art form that's about to eclipse the blues as we've had it. So it's sort of a transition period, like a transition period in America from, you know, the 20th century, the early, from the 19th century to the 20th century. We have this smaller microcosmic uh, conflict between the old and the new. You know, I'm almost afraid. I don't. I, I wouldn't dare call myself a Wilsonian actor. I, I, um, I, I mean, this may be. This is my second uh, Wilson, August Wilson piece, and I'm honored that someone would call me that. And then <laughs> Costanza <laughs> thinks I'm able to handle uh, August's work. But uh, I mean, it, it's a pantheon of some of the greatest actors ever having done that. I mean, one, one of the main reasons. I ended up going to grad school was because of Fences, the, the, the James Earl Jones and uh, Courtney Vance one, watching Courtney Vance and James Earl Jones in that encouraged me to kind of pursue it. Um, because watching it and also watching these great actors, and it was all around when I went to grad school. Because when I went to grad school up at Yale, on the Yale rep stage was already two trains running. Because uh, August Wilson, uh, sorry, uh, Lloyd Richards was the dean of our school. so. We were all immersed in August Wilson, that there were two trains running at the rep. There was piano lesson on Broadway. And I remember doing a, a reading or, or, or being the reader for an audition that uh, uh, Mr. Lloyd Richards was having. Remember that I think that the as yet movie star Halle Berry came to <laughs> audition for. I remember that. So uh, now, nah, uh, knowing Mr. Stephen Henderson and uh, Anthony Chisholm, knew uh, the late Tommy Hollis, many of these incredible actors who are part of the Wilsonian sort of troupe. Uh, yeah, it's quite an honor uh, that I, I'm trying to live up to. We were lucky enough to have uh, a two-week rehearsal process ahead of time with uh, George Wolfe, our director. So we spent many, 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 many hours sort of uh, diving into the text, diving into these men's histories and their relationship. A lot of it is already in the original play. Uh, uh, that August Wil Wilson wrote. He wrote about their connections in the past. And so we got to spend many, many hours together sort of exploring that. And then we just started hanging, you know, outside of rehearsal, we would go and eat together. <laughs> I mean, that, that becomes a thing. That's how you build a relationship. So we would go out, we'd break bread together, and we'd talk. And it's still, it's still something that's evolving. We find out about how we grew up, the certain things that we have in common. Uh, vernacular, uh, how we were raised, where we were raised, 
those sort of things kind of make, I mean, even Coleman said, the other, it was funny, we were talking about our moms and our growing, he said, my goodness, we've been raised by the same woman because there was so much similarities in the way that uh, sort of culturally, the way we were raised, certain phrases and vernacular that, that we know very, very well. And that creates a bond. Well, there's still, I mean, didn't we just, just recently have in the news, I mean, the big blow up with, uh, what was that Old Town Road that little Nas was doing? There was a controversy about Billboard wouldn't put it on the country western charts. <laughs> and feeling that he wasn't getting his due. There's a lot of talk, there's been a lot about sort of the cultural appropriation of R&B or pop music taking from, from black culture but not necessarily getting the same recognition or, or, you know, Taylor Swift versus Beyonce, who's winning Grammys and who isn't, uh, who's, um, so it's still very much the same, I think, the, the same struggle that there is today that some people tend to get rewarded more than others. Uh, for racial reasons, for, for, for gender reasons. Um, it's the same, I think it is still the same uh, struggle. Viola Davis is extraordinary. And, and, and if you, anybody who's watched her work from, from the stage now you know, to screen knows that she's an extraordinarily uh, transformative actor and that she can step into whatever character she's playing. So it's no surprise. It's what it is, is, is joy. I mean, she helps you step in by being who she is and her skill, her craft as an actor and her commitment as an artist to what she's doing makes it easy for you to play opposite her, you know, to take on the character you need to and you understand immediately the relationship between the character. Well, he's, he walks around, he's like the big brother. <laughs> he, he is like the big brother being encouraging. He wants you, he, 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 he when we just had photos last week, he was talking, you could see it, and he meant it. He was so, he said, I'm so happy you're all here. That he got what he wanted, that he assembled this group of artists, this group of actors together, and he believes in every last one of us and believes that, uh, in what we are doing. And so he sort of exudes that throughout. He makes us all seem calm. He makes sure we're all protected from all the other stuff, from the what happens above us in terms of those production meetings and make sure those people have what they need, but make sure that we have the right space and the time and, and the encouragement we need to actually tell the story. You know, we've, we've all each had our individual coaches. I mean, and, you know, none of us have played. I mean, Glenn played piano a little bit. So is the idea of then getting Branford Marsalis, now having to play in front of him, of all people. Uh, which is not intimidating at all. <laughs> not intimidating at all to have to pretend to play in front of him. So we have gradually, bit by bit, kind of taken possession of uh, our instruments, in a sense, at least looking like we really are comfortable with them and know what we're playing and learning these individual songs and, and uh, our parts in them. And, and, and when we do sort of get it together, there's always like, yeah, we did it. Can you imagine that? We, are, we, we, we really are playing together. I mean, it's the same thing. It's coming together as the cast. It's the same experience, honestly.